If nothing is certain, then anything is possible. If anything is possible, this certainly is. If nothing is certain, then anything is possible. If anything is possible, this certainly is. My name is Mark Brown. Welcome to my paranormal reality. To my brother, who left far too early, my father, who left far too suddenly, and my family, which I will cherish forever. This episode, Who Am I? I was born in 1967, the year of love, as they said back then. I always felt that I had a fairly normal childhood. Of course, I later came to understand that most everyone thinks that they have a fairly normal childhood until they meet other people that shatter their definition of normal. Nothing about my childhood was shattering, but at the same time I could also question how much was normal. My parents had a strained relationship, but at the same time not horrible. They seemed happy enough when I was young, but then again I don't really remember much when I was young. That small fact alone has always bothered me, but as of yet I still have no solid answers of why do I not remember? When I was seven years old, my mother and I had convinced my father that I should have a sibling. I was hoping for a brother, and when I was eight, I got my wish. What I did not realize at the time was that my dad was not in the same mindset as my mom and I. He was trying to determine if he still wanted to be married, and my mom and I instead gave him another reason why he needed to stay that way. Needless to say, my brother's childhood was much different than my own. My parents grew more distant, and when I was a teenager, they finally agreed to separate. Less than a year later, they got back together for the kid's sake. They later agreed that was a mistake. When I graduated high school and left for college, their relationship plummeted. My brother resented my leaving telling me that I had left him in hell. They made it almost a year before they divorced. My dad had been unhappy with the relationship and was bitter about the divorce. He carried that bitterness into many aspects of his life. It wasn't until I was in my late thirties that my dad finally began to gain a new respect for life and the things in it. He had found a love of dancing, clogging to be specific, and it lit him up in a way that I'd never seen in all my life. My brother was the self-proclaimed black sheep of our family. Growing up, he always hung around with the wrong kids. He found himself in jail by the time he was 16, and went back on a couple of occasions in the years to follow. Being siblings that were eight years apart, we grew up with very little in common, and at each other's throats more often than not. It wasn't until after I'd graduated college and my parents had been apart for three years that my brother and I were actually able to get along as friends. As for myself, again, I don't remember much from when I was young. Part of the reason for that may be related to my vision. I had lazy eye in my left eye when I was a kid but the extent of my visual problems weren't diagnosed until I was five and entered kindergarten. My teacher said that I was having a hard time seeing the blackboard and suggested I see a specialist. My parents were told that I needed an operation on my left eye and that I would wear an eye patch for several months and then glasses for the rest of my life. After my operation was complete, I was sitting at home quietly playing with my toys when I asked my mom very curiously, where did my other balls go? She was confused and asked what I meant. I replied, before I used to have four balls to play with, but now I only have one. She broke down when telling me the story. 
telling me how it had crushed her to realize that I'd been seeing quadruple, double mirror images for years. Wearing an eye patch in kindergarten and then glasses in the first grade did nothing to help my popularity. My parents' friends deemed me the Little Professor, a title that stuck for most of my childhood. I was always quiet and shy, and therefore a continual teacher favorite. I went on my first date in junior high school. Nothing really happened, but several things struck me about it. Part of the date included dinner at her house. She had a large family, and early on they were all impressed when I picked up their cat and started petting it. The girl's mother looked at me curiously and asked, You have a way with animals, don't you? I guess so, I responded, and then someone puzzled, Why do you ask? That cat doesn't come to anyone and it doesn't like strangers. The fact that it came right up to you tells me you have a way with animals. In fact, she was right. I always had. I actually preferred to interact with animals as versus people most of the time. Animals are less likely to try to hurt your feelings or screw you over. I'm sure that I chose computers as a profession for similar reasons. When our date was winding down, we stopped at my house, at which point she talked with my mom for a few minutes. My mom confided later that when I was out of earshot, my date had asked, He's a little mature for his age, isn't he? My mom had laughed and replied, Yes, he is. I tell people he's 16 going on 40. Again, I always considered myself normal. However, after I had taken my date home, and my mom had told me about that conversation, I began to wonder. Certainly not all people are exactly like me, but am I really that different? I still think that I'm fairly normal, but maybe I've experienced some things that many normal people have not. But then again, again, Maybe some have, but choose to ignore them. I think that's more likely. Welcome. If this is the first episode of our podcast that you're listening to, then thank you for listening and tuning in, so to speak, and joining our listening audience. Otherwise, this is probably the third episode of our podcast that you've listened to. The first being Death Cab for Cutie, and the second being Mother's Day. These podcasts are a reading from the book My Paranormal Reality. I am the author, Mark Brown. If you've bought the book and are reading along, you might be a little surprised because the first two episodes are actually later on in the book. But I felt compelled to start those off and kind of help set the stage for what really started this all. That is, deciding to write a book about basically weird shit that's happened to me. Part of it was because I really didn't want to forget. Part of it was there were sometimes things that happened that were strange enough that If I didn't write them down, and if I didn't know that I wrote them down, I wouldn't have believed them. So, if nothing else, I'm like, whoever does believe me, knowing for sure my family, this will help capture and truly record for them. Yeah, this stuff really happened. What is this stuff? Well, you're going to have to continue to listen or buy the book and read for yourself. In the book, I cover things that have happened 
really over the last seven years being the mark of after my brother's passing which really kind of set in motion the ability for desire for me to start looking at the universe as a little more open-mindedly than I did before. <laughs> for for one of the most uh, lame comparisons that I could probably pull out, I feel like Harry Potter, I don't remember what episode, any of you listeners that are really into Harry Potter, I'm sure you'll know him. I do remember the animal, they were called Thestrals, I believe. And in the early episodes, so to speak, the early movies of Harry Potter, no one saw them. They were just horseless carriages. But later, Harry saw them for what they were, which were almost demonic looking horses. And his friend Luna was able to share with him that it was because Harry had had experience with death that he was able to see them. And the other people hadn't. It kind of suggested that death leaves a mark on your soul. Or touches your third eye or whatever other, again, woo-woo spiritual or whatever thing you want to say, but for sure it affects people. God knows it's affected me. And I do see more things than I did back before my encounters with death. So, there's going to be a lot of different things of that sort that I'm going to cover in these stories. If you like them, keep listening, share them with your friends. Visit the website, myparanormalreality.com. It's all one word, no dashes, just myparanormalreality.com. There's links to the book you can purchase for those people like me that are old enough to remember and prefer actual printed pieces of paper. And there's also links to buy the ebook. It's on Amazon, it's on iTunes. And regardless what you're into, I hope you enjoy listening. Until next time.